Starting, starting. Hey, everybody. Welcome to While You're Reforging. My name is Doug with 2 Plus Tough, and with me are two fine gentlemen from Rerolling Ones, Mr. Jack Ballard. Hey, everybody. Well, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everybody. And uh, Mark, the man himself. Hello. Internet. Mark, uh, ones are hot, shoe. <laughs> yeah. You can, everybody just call me shoe. That's fine. Okay. Shoe it is. Um, so yeah, we're just going to sit down and have a hobby hangout. I was planning on this. I talked about it last night. Um, as far as just chilling and painting some more, I got some night haunt with me tonight. We are cranking out with, uh, a plethora of washes and such, but, uh, in the meantime, people had asked about the, the, uh, battle force boxes last night and I've been dragging my heels on doing a review for them. So I thought we would just kind of chat about that and then whatever the actual chat has to offer. So how does that sound for everyone? Sounds great. Sweet. So, yes. Um, let's see here. First of all, let's start off with what's everyone working on? Are we painting stuff tonight? Uh, I am painting... Well, I'll go first. <laughs> yeah, I'm Jim. painting... Um, I've had a Stormcast army that I have... It's, it was my first army getting into AOS, uh, like most people. And um, this is what I play in tournaments, and I do decently well with them. And uh, it's, you know, I'm starting to get to that phase where if I'm going to go to a tournament and I'm going to win it or get second or third place, my whole army should be painted. And so I am painting Liberators right now because, you know, you need battle line. So that's yeah. what I'm doing. It's awesome. awesome. How about you, Mark? Oh, my goodness. Yes. Super, super echo. <laughs> I'm actually at a different computer right now. All my hobby stuff is a mile away from me. But I'm actually working on Jack's Lord Eckler. I'm uh, going to help him with his... With his uh, Turning army and teleporting people around and smashing faces. Nice. And this is your—is this still your your shooting stormcast army? Yes, it is. It's my shoot cast. Shoot cast. Shoot cast eternals. I dig it. Awesome. Well, uh, yeah, I don't actually know what these guys are called. There's the dude with the scythes. Um, you have me keeping up. I'm painting an army for my wife Jess, but she doesn't like painting, so I'm trying to find schemes that just use washes over a white primer, just so it can be as quick and painless as possible. Um, kind of focus in on that. So... Is it Grim, the... Grim Gas Reapers? Is that what they are? Y yes, that sounds... Hey, sure. <laughs> that sounds right-ish. I'm sure Brent's screaming right now somewhere. Yes, he's just They're weeping great. openly. <laughs> Do what? He's just weeping openly. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> Nobody knows the units! The rules. It's, like, it's not that you guys don't read the rules. You just don't even read these books. <laughs> uh, somebody noticed my my background has changed. I um, spent this is my project for the day. I did some adulting with tax information, and then spent the rest of the day doing uh, I don't know some cool shelves so it looks saucy when we start doing battle reports. I thought that I had ch chalk like normal chalk and I was going to use it on this little board for hashtag and I was going to do hashtag um, justice for Cordell but uh, unfortunately I didn't have as much as I thought I did uh, so let's see here I'm going to oh, opa, switch it to so everyone can see what I'm seeing as soon as I figure out how to do that hey here we go ah, we're going to fall <laughs> Okay, and so what we have here, is everyone seeing my screen? Yeah. So what we have here is just the, the page that some leaker put out forever ago. Of course, now you can get it. It's the all the battle forces that G-Dubs put out. And I'm going to skip the 40K ones because I don't know enough about those armies. I don't think. No. None of this registers. Other than Space Marines, good, because apparently that's the only faction I've seen with two. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you want some Marines with your Marines... Yo. Uh, but let's kick it off with the Edenith Deepkin Deep Surge Raiding Party. Okay. So it looks like we have one box of eels, two alapexes. Uh, I think that's a Tidecaster, the female leader one. Mm -hmm. And then a box of each type of reaver. So the thralls, thralls and the... Uh, Namardi reavers. And the Marty. Marty, that's what I meant to say, not that reavers. Is so are the thralls a dual build kit? You can build the thralls for something else, right? I think you have their individual kits. Like, I've, yeah, one of them has bows, and the other ones are uh, 
like du dual handed, uh, double handed weapons, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I assume they're going to be dual kit, but they're not, unfortunately. The double handed weapons ones are surprisingly very, very good because a lot of people just play ills. You know, it's the most, it's what you see at tournaments mostly, but the mm -hmm. thralls are deadly. And if you're not prepared, they'll delete your unit. Yeah. I think everything in Deep King can kind of be defined that way. You know, <laughs> delete your lunch. Yeah, like a lot of stuff is like you, <laughs> you'll you lose just due to like ignorance. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they hit like a freaking bulgore or better than a bulgore. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mark, have you played the Deep King yet? Um, I have not played against or with them yet. Okay. But Jack, not you, you have? Yeah, very, very good at melee combat, and yeah. they have some really nice rules. Like, for instance, like where I play a, a really heavy shooting army, like with their alliance ab allegiance ability, you have to shoot at the closest unit. <laughs> you know, if you play right, you know you can have them shooting at some sort of garbage unit while you like <laughs> countercharge them with something deadly. Right. Super legit. Um, <clears throat> yeah, though I played one game against them, and it was. He didn't bring any of the, the reavers, no ranged units. It was two units of eels and then a big blob of the thralls and a turtle, the big turtle dude. Mm -hmm. um, super legit. Like, again, I think uh, it was another one of those players. I think it might actually be the same person that you played against. But, yeah, just a heavy reliance on the eels. But I noticed he threw the uh, thralls on a flank, and they got some serious work done. Um, hey Doug, what year were you born? What year uh -oh. was I born? Uh oh. Wait, before or after Back to the Future? Because <laughs> every time you say super legit, I think of MC Hammer. <laughs> I mean, 1989 is the year I was born. <laughs> super legit, bro. Too legit to quit. Exactly. <laughs> I, I uh, love your swing, Doug. I do. <laughs> yeah, it is definitely trapped in the past. Baller. Yeah. <laughs> baller. <laughs> do you say baller a lot? <laughs> Uh, I say psych, house, and moted, so that dates me quite back. <laughs> oh, lock the screen. There we go. Okay. Um, what would you guys say is a good way to expand from this box if you were to grab the Deepkin one? Because I think, I mean, for any faction that doesn't have a Star Collecting box, that's prime. Mm -hmm. This is like the yeah, best time. This is this is really good. Is there, I mean, it's an excellent set. How I would expand from this is I would yeah. scoop all of the models up that are not eels, except for maybe one of the shark. And I would sell them immediately on Craigslist and use that money to buy way more eels. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's what you would do. But, uh, I think uh, a model you'd want to get is a Killian King. Because yeah. there's a lot of uh, re-rolling one bonuses he gives you. A lot of this army is like synergy, which is awesome. I like when you receive a buff from another unit. I just think that's cool. Uh, and so I'd get a Killian King and... Uh, you know, you can't go wrong with eels. I think they'll get nerfed, or they'll get a points increase in the next GHB. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably. They're just too efficient, and they're just too... It's like, if you get some of those melee eels in combat, or even the defensive eels, where you're mm -hmm. like, you know, I think you have a three-up... It's like everybody has a ethereal amulet, a three-up save, you know, immune to rend. And uh, so, eels are going to get expensive, but I think uh, Killian King is... You can't lose with that. Yeah, the king, the turtle, I get the centerpiece model always. I mean, if, you, if you're not sure where to start, uh, these battle boxes are awesome. And then whatever the centerpiece model is, like a La Royale for Sylvaneth and, totally. you know, that kind of thing. What do you guys think of the um, the Eidolons, the, the, the Wave Riders? Uh, I think that's a, like, as far as in-game or, like... Yeah, uh, yeah, in-game. I mean, the model's stunning. I don't think anyone... Uh, the, uh, <laughs> the, I've only fought the melee one. And okay. another thing that will, uh, as, oh, never mind, I can't swear. But <laughs> as Mark likes to put it, he uh, he has sexual intercourse. <laughs> Wait, so, okay. What? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, right, right. I don't, I say the shorter version of that. Yeah, he's really good. Okay. Yeah. Let's, let's go. What's next? What's next on the list? <laughs> Well, moving hold, hold along swiftly. Can I talk about the Eldar set for a second? Like, as a person who like looks at 40k often with like, I'm like that meme of the guy looking over his shoulder all the time. Like, yeah, <laughs> those models are pretty. Um, yeah. I've always like thought, 
you know, having like one of those wraith forces would be cool, like Eldar, the, all the ones that are dead, they're just like the undead robots. Totally. And uh, I, I'm looking at this force here, and I think I see guardians in there, like 10 guardians and some striking scorpions. No? What are those guys? Uh, yeah, so it's a little bit more blown up on my screen. So I have um, the obviously the big wraith yeah, guy big in the guy. center. Yeah. And it looks like I have a unit of guardians, a basic infantry dudes on the left in red. A mm-hmm. unit jet bikes, whatever their Viper thing is, like their little like medium-sized transport in the mm-hmm. directly next to the Wraith guy. And then some kind of aspect warrior. Yeah, I think it is fire dragons. I'm not sure what the names are. Well, this is kind of like the equivalent of having a knight in with a bunch of space marines, right? Isn't it? Like that's their knight equivalent, isn't it? Uh yeah, I think it is. Yeah, For that's sure. just a stupid cool model. I think Jess Goodwin drew that model in like 1981. And it's like <laughs> a shark. It's never had to evolve. It's perfect. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Uh, um yeah no absolutely i think it's a super good model i mean um we can look at the 40k ones the only ones other ones that stand to me like obviously the, the double space marine one is unique because i don't think i've ever had seen a year where they have double of the same box or same faction uh mm-hmm. the admech one i had some admech stuff it looks fine you're gonna need a lot more infantry and then yeah. i think kind of the same thing for necrons honestly because they're an infantry based army yeah, the the thing that stands out for the admech is the robots, and yeah. then the, um, you know, so two of these boxes, the robots can call, and you're pretty much done. Like you wouldn't need anything else. Um, that is very factually accurate. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> this Necron stuff is like that's pretty much all you need for the your kind of troop. What is it? I mean, your patrol detachment. Yeah, I mean that's also like most of the main units of an army. So yeah, if you get like you know a box of that, like you can really expand anywhere. Mm-hmm. Realistically, that's pretty cool. Uh, All right. Sorry um, to distract your channel. So no, 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 no. You're fine, dude. That's that's the whole reason we're just we're just chilling and talking. As far as the deepkin box goes, uh, one thing I would add is if you do seem to like the infantry, grabbing the soul render, who is basically the anglerfish human. He, he looks like a Power Ranger villain who wants to be an anglerfish, but uh, he is a great addition because he can like bring models back to an existing unit. Mm. And with the right um, enclave and synergies, he can bring three plus D three back pretty regularly, and that's epic when you wow. combine. If if you do like what Jack was talking about with the big blobs of swords and being all total BA. All right, moving on to kind of I think the biggest one here is the Daughters of Cain box. Um, so kind of just. Trying to look at it here, you get obviously the shrine kit, which means you gain access to almost every single hero except for Marathi because they're all part of that kit. Um, mm-hmm. So you have like the Slaughter Queen, uh, like, like a lower level priest lady, and then the Malusai, who is the um, Medusa chick on, side, on top of the throne. And of course, you can configure that in like a bajillion different ways. You have two units of the harpies, so the flying units, which can be built one of two ways. And then looks like a unit of witch elves, which I, of course have as a multi kit as well. Mm-hmm. And then I count, I think two units of snakes, like the uh, Medusa ladies. I think I count one, two, three, four, five. I don't see the sixth, but it looks like there's six of them. So initial thoughts on Daughters of Cain one. Um, beautiful models. They're great in the game. You can't go wrong with that box. No. Mm-hmm. I, I think like my the shortcut I'm looking at for all Daughters of Cain sets would have to be the, the way to get the Witch Elves cheaper. And that's not doing it. <laughs> this this kit's not doing it. This is kind of giving you a lot of everything else. Um, I for think sure. it's with Witch, El- Witch Elves are still kind of like the hurdle to get into this faction. I would um, agree with that. It's still pretty expensive. Um, start collecting is a good way to start, but you need a bunch. Like you need like two groups of forty. <laughs> like, there's a is there a start collection for Garden Cane, or Garden's Cane, or was that one of the Allied boxes that came out? It was one of the Allied ones. They they it came out where it was just ten daughters and the shrine kit for ninety bucks, I think, which was a relatively good deal if you needed the shrine kit. Um, but at no point has there been like a cheaper way to get sisters than uh, daughters than that. Yeah, I mean, you need a lot of like daughters. Like it's a hot army, beautiful models. It's eBay is probably not going to give you much, no. of, uh, you know. So it's it's going to cost you, but they're really good. They're the best army match play tournament wise right now, and they're just beautiful. And so if they're your thing, yeah, pick this up. I say. 
Totally. Yeah. And it's, it's one of those things like we were talking about ways to expand with the deepkin as far as like, you know, what kind of heroes you might buff and taking different uh, enclaves and things like that. You can, you can get some, you can go in some different directions. But the thing is about Daughters of Cain, like you get almost every single hero in the faction in this box, at least one copy of it. You'll probably want a second shrine eventually, but like starting off, I feel like this has just about everything you want up until like your first, like, I don't know, 1500 point game. I'll be right back. Yeah, dude. So I think that's pretty sweet. What would you what would you look at as far as a way to expand from this if you were to pick this up? Uh, more witch elves. Yeah, that's <laughs> all there is to it. It's just more witch elves. Yeah, more witch elves. Uh, looks like you got hag queens in there, and, and you can't go wrong with Marathi. It's a uh, a model that is beautiful and is going to last you until the end of the game, pretty much. Yeah. You can only do three damage to her per turn, not per battle round or anything. Oh, wait, per battle round. Wait, whatever it is, make it, she takes three damage per <laughs> battle round, not turns. Excuse me. Yep. And so it's like she's going to make it to turn five. She's really, she's good. I don't think, I don't, I've faced her a couple of times. I've never felt she's overpowered as far as what she can do. And, uh, and so you're not going to give your opponent the feel badsies. So, yeah. Uh, Marathi's not bad. That's a good place to go after that. Yeah, I think I agree with that. I like the idea. Of, like, I think she's a just like you said. Like, she she doesn't give the feel bads because she does not like. She doesn't do everything. I like that about her. Like, she just does her thing. And she's super good at it. You know, tearing people up with magic and you know melee. I don't know, but like, it's <laughs> the the feel badsies are like when the gash is like, hey, you don't get to have a magic phase because I'm so good at unbinding. <laughs> Who's your uh, friend who took Marathi in a thousand point game? That has a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't. He hasn't done it yet. It's in. Um, uh, I think it's actually this coming weekend. I think. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's going to a one thousand point. He's, he's one of my uh, patrons and a follower of the show. Like he was asking about. It, I'm like, man, that's. He asked if it was good, and I was like, that's that's uh that's beyond good, man. Beyond good. Kind of like, eh, let's not be friends. <laughs> no, I wish him the best. I think I don't, yeah. I don't, he's not a um, a hardcore gamer guy. I think uh, Daughters was, I think I believe Daughters was his first army. I know he got into the game through D and D, and he was like, "Oh, look at these cool models!" And that was basically it. <laughs> but yeah, well, she's a she's a ball buster. <laughs> <laughs> she is. I'm looking at. Uh, I'll tell you what. I'm a scroll builder right now, trying to build, make a thousand point daughter cane list. Just just because I'm I'm sadistic. <laughs> yeah, there. That's the thing. I remember when. Um, uh, Mark and I met for drinks at Mox forever ago, and we were chatting about like if you could build one army, what would it be? And I said, Daughters of Cain, because this is way back in the day. Uh, yeah. And uh, you know, the problem is like I, I don't mind horde armies. I love painting horde armies. It's I, because I just don't like myself. Apparently, I don't know. It's a lot of work, <laughs> and I just sell them off and trade them or whatever. But um, the, the thing is, is a horde army of sixty dollars per ten unit is is rough. Uh, and so yeah mark's right whenever you can see a chance to get a discount on the girls i mean at this point if you need if you're starting with this army just i mean pretty much the girls kit the witch elves uh, are pretty much free in this if you consider the discounts on everything else but you just, you just need a lot of girls <laughs> uh, yeah you do um so i asked mark i asked a jack while you were away mark do you have anything to add as far as like where would you go if you're expanding from this kit for the daughters, I yeah. agree. With this, uh, I agree with Jack's analysis that um, Marathi is probably next step. Like, yep. just get the centerpiece going, and then just go with the rule of cool. Daughters of Cain is a really hard army to make bad decisions with. So that, like, that's a good way to say it. You know, like it's it's you're not going to put anything, paint something lovingly, put it on the table from Daughters of Cain to think, oh man, I wish I hadn't painted this beautiful model. You know, like, <laughs> that's, just, that's not a reality. Fair enough. All right. We'll hop into Seraphon, which, according to Seraphon players, is the worst faction in the game, but according <laughs> to everyone else, is the greatest faction in the game. <laughs> My brother is a Seraphon player, and I have to hear him. <laughs> in the last tournament I was in, I was, I can't believe, like, it was, I, it was, I was embarrassed to lose. Uh, and he was just, <laughs> they moan about their army as they're beating you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Seraphon are fun. And uh, this dark, this not this battle force box is interesting because it's like 
there's no source really in there of the way they have it built anyway like uh so it's it's definitely skewing you toward the skink direction oh yeah uh, so i i haven't really fought many play players who i've fought seraphon several times but most of the people i've played have played source heavy so uh skinks are nice you know they can escape in combat uh, rather than attacking and you know they're in the way and they're pretty decently cheap so totally yeah one of the things i like about that you touched on the skinks is that like with the exception of the the carnosaur kit like having that much skink stuff going on is it makes a good complementary force to the star collecting box like if you grab that in the star collecting box like you have a lot of stuff going on yeah, yeah. but if you notice in the way they have it built uh, they have the troglodon Mm -hmm. and the old blood on foot there and so if you built it the other way you would lose a model unless you like, you can build up the uh skink rider of the troglodon as a priest mm. kind of like it, it doesn't have it that way like there's no games workshop like oh you can use this guy as a priest on foot but you can it's right totally nice you know they have the uh the prayer that get, lets you re-roll saves and whatnot and so it's, an, it's a good model to take, but mm. uh, it's probably so far it's my least favorite of the battle forces. Really? Yeah. Okay. Which? Huh. Okay. That surprised me. I think. Uh, <sighs> so the Troglodon's all build is the Carnosaur, right? Yeah, Carnosaur. You can do uh, Old Blood, blood. or uh, Scarvet. Okay, so if you have the Scarvet, okay, the Scarvet is also the Old Blood plus. Parts on his head, right? Yeah, the old blood like has a different weapon, I believe. Oh, weapon. Okay, so there's three potential models in that box. There's the old blood scar vet and the priest. Uh, the troglodon, uh, the old blood on carnosaur and the scar vet on carnosaur. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. So I'm just trying to do math on how you'd be down a model. You could. So is it the priest can't go on the ground. Is that why? Well, he's not like GW doesn't have a model where that guy's on the foot. And so oh, if skin priest? It, yeah, it'd be a homebrew. Oh, oh. Okay. Hmm. Gotcha. Interesting. Which I mean, with with the rest of this, knowing what what is in the battle force, what would you build the Carnosaur as? Would you keep it as the dude on the Troglodon? No, Troglodon. I'm I'm not gonna. I don't like crapping on models and saying stuff is garbage. But no, no. the least. <laughs> Efficient one of those three. Oh, that's, that's a great way to say it. I mean, yeah, I I would take him last if I had a chance to take all three. Um, but you also have the Basilidon. That's a nice model. You know, that's a very good model. You can't, like, they're really the, even though they got nerfed, the Ripper Dactyls are really good. And you have two sets. So you can go double Ripper Dactyl or double uh, Pterodon. Mm. People have a lot of success with Ripper Dactyl. So running two units of those would be pretty good. And you do have the Star Priest. I'm surprised none of these come with a slam. You know, I was actually going to touch on that because, like, it's just such an iconic thing. And what a great way to like jump into this box. He's he's resin, right? Yeah, uh, I believe so. Yeah. yeah. I now to be fair, they have released an AOS kit. The Sylvaneth kit I bought, the Guardians of the Deepwood, huh? had uh, had a resin branch witch in it. But I haven't seen a kit come out with resin in it since. Hmm. And that was like 2015. I mean, it was like it was an AOS opening box set. Interesting. Yeah, no, I think it's a real shame because I think uh, that would be a better introduction for new players. Like, hey, here's the Slon dude, and here's everything. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, just kind of build the story out from there. Sure. Plus, it'd be like something that a newer player who maybe has the Star Collecting box would actually really, really, truly want. That's true. At least power wise. Totally. Yeah. Would you suggest that as a next stop if someone bought this? For yeah. any or yeah, for any Seraphon player, sure. That's the next stop should be Star Collecting Box because that's one of the, you know, it's a really good deal. Even though it's like the, it's similar to the Sylvaneth one where you get a weird number of units like mm -hmm. the models. So yeah, you, it's like sixteen dryads. And you only yeah, need two. Exactly. <laughs> like, uh, too much stuff, and so in again, eBay is a great place for Seraphon players. I don't know, like, I'm also basing this off last year where uh, AOS wasn't as popular as it is now, but, you know, if you, if somebody does get, you know, 12 cold, cold, uh, 
what, Cold One Riders or whatever. Mm -hmm. and they're still the other two. So it's a good place to find stuff on for uh, the Seraphon. Hmm. Good point. Good point. Um, any closing thoughts on that box whatsoever? The Seraphon? Yeah. I think um, I, I love Rippert Actuals in the game. I just feel like they are so fiddly. <laughs> they're hard to work with unless you really know what you're doing modeling wise. Oh yeah. Dude. So I see those. I see this box, and I just kind of cringe on the concept of having to use those like super fiddly models. I mean, I can imagine weighting them down with some burly base and putting them on a brass rod and just calling it good. Um, but you know, Ripper dactyls make me. I'm I'm a huge klutz though, so maybe that's my problem. <laughs> all right, all right, calm down, to get to. Yeah. Uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, I guess I've warned players: if you do play Seraphon. Uh, prepared to start complaining and whining about your army constantly. Um, so be <laughs> That's right. You need to de at least triple your salt intake so you can get yeah. as much in as you put out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sweet. And we'll move on to clearly the best uh, battle force here in the entire collection here. And that is the Slaves to Darkness one. Uh, which features a war shrine, which has, and then there's a manticore kit, so it could be a chaos lord or a chaos sorcerer lord or a manticore. Uh, looks like two boxes of knights, so ten knights total. I guess I guess they reboxed them into ten, I think now. So, so ten knights. Uh, looks like I think chaos warriors also come in a weird number, like sixteen or something like that. Maybe not. And then uh, a chariot kit looks like. All right, war chariot. Do what? Is that the gore chariot? Yeah, it's um, it can be the chariot with like the big gorilla dude in front, or you can build it as with the two horses in front. Okay. And uh, it's not noted here, but um, this kid is the coolest thing ever. Beautiful woman, not included, but should be expected. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what are your guys' thoughts? Let's talk about the Amatricor for a minute. So the Amatricor has an alt build, right? The it's just the priest, or I'm sorry, the the uh, wizard, the champion, or just a like a third head, right, or something like that. No, uh, the chaos lord or chaos sorcerer lord. Okay, so there's no monster only option for it. No, no, it looks a lot like the uh, I think it's the chimera kit. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's that's the chimera kit I'm thinking of then. Um, I tell you that chariot. If you want to use chariots in a slaves to darkness army, mm -hmm. plan on running. Like four or five of them. Like I agree. It just a single chariot, al chariot alone will just run right up and then disappoint you. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. If you're gonna play chaos and run chariots, play Slanesh. It's he'll get a lot yes. more satisfaction. Yes. Those chariots can kill things. The chariot in in, in the Slaves of Darkness army is a meat shield. I haven't now. I haven't thought about what they could do in a Nurgle army, uh, where they got extra wounds or rolling saves and stuff. But uh, yeah. They uh, on their own the slaves of darkness chariots have um, been pretty wow <laughs> for me when I get them on the field alone. Well, like okay, like try not to be negative. Uh, I would say this is the it's this is still a 2015 army. All that stuff is 2015. Mm -hmm. If you plan on being it's a you know if you plan on taking it to a tournament, um, hopefully you can like make it Nurgle or something like that. But if you're gonna do just that stuff in Slave to Darkness, you're probably going to be disappointed. But it's a fun, like, drink beers, roll dice army with your yeah. friends. Yeah. I think if you give them an extra wound from the Glock Hen and re-roll their saves from the, what's his name, the Har Harbinger of Decay, then maybe they could just be a big old wall of meat. Yeah, yeah. They'll... they'll you know? Be hard to kill, but it's, they're not very good at killing stuff. You know, three yeah. up, four, uh, three up, four up, no rend. Um, which it's they, can, they could have rend with two with two handers. They can have they can have rend, but oh. they don't get their five yeah. up against mortal wounds that way. Yeah. Um, actually, that's a good note. So let's break this down. So as so this box force as slaves to darkness is going to be pretty meh, even with the I mean the slaves to darkness the legion's abilities are already pretty meh, but um, you also just don't have a lot of heroes to be able to take advantage of the stuff that they do get. So that's that's we're just going to write that off. But as far as like Nurgle goes, 
marks correctly, you can make them a good scenario presence by making them just a pain in the butt to dislodge. <laughs> um, if you are going to do that, I would definitely say like add, I don't know, Blight Kings or something to the army that does Mortal Wounds or Rend just to kind of fill in their weakness. But they can be tough. They can be tanky. Um, yeah, it's like they can definitely be the anvil. Totally. The slaves to darkness is there's not a lot of hammers. Agreed. Like you build the chariot, you're, it's like it's not a hammer. No, it's so. it's certainly an anvil. Um, what if you wanted to stick with uh, we'll say mortal stuff just for the sake of someone who is like me and likes the mortal stuff more than demons? Uh, Jack, what would you say is a good like corn edition? Does corn have any hammers that you would add to this that are mortal? Ooh, <laughs> you can hope you get blood boil off with some slaughter priests, but it's, mm -hmm. um, it's like where I say slaves to darkness is a 2015 army, like corn's a 2016 army. Mm -hmm. Like, it's there are so many things. Like, you picking up some of these battle force boxes, you can definitely pick out some stuff from the Ivan at Deep End that would love to have, uh, you know, that could do some damage. And there's yeah. nothing in this box that can blow you away. The best thing you can have is maybe Chaos Sorcerer Lord or Mana Core giving getting Winds of Chaos off. Mm -hmm. and I've had that work, mm -hmm. well. but the rest of that army is even even the Chaos even the Mana Core's attacks aren't impressive. No, oh gosh, no. So I think in Corn you could say you had a blob of twenty warriors with halberds and shields. Uh, that's two inch range. You whip them to fury with the uh, Bloodstoker. That's plus one to hit, so now they're hitting on twos, winning on fours. Three yeah, attacks for Fury, the... the is re-roll ones to wound. Okay, re-roll. Okay, okay. Well, I, I take that because their wounds are... They're still wounding on four up. Um, that'll help, you know. But then the... Uh, See, so with Thunder Fury, you get the uh, banner going on them. And then you could get Ocular Visions from a wizard. Uh -huh. uh, which is like kind of like saying Eyeball Visions. It's a, it's uh -huh. Mystic Shield. Re-roll, say, rolls a one. Oh, is it? Ocular Visions is just Mystic Shield now? Right? Yeah. I'm not, I don't think I'm wrong. Yeah, I think you're right. It's just... What's the... what's the? Uh, no, maybe it's Demonic Power, I'm thinking yes, of? The good. Sorcerer that's buff where the reroll hits and wounds? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah the, um, no, that's the Sorcerer on foot has the Demonic Power one where you can reroll ones of... Hit again, and like you're, going, you're jumping through a lot of hoops to try to make this good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm just trying to think of like if you were to like, it's, let's say for example, you got this box, you want to take a couple of corn units to to make yourself a little better. Like with Nurgle, we sorted out that the Glock and a Harbinger of Decay will change these guys in a big way. Um, that's an extra wound on all the dudes and uh, uh, re-rolling your saves of or rolling extra saves of five up and plus one attack, plus one attack. That's right from the uh, Glockin's, Glockin's ability. So I think there's I think there might be some stuff there that we're overlooking by not looking deep into the corn stuff because these do get all the corn keyword. I don't know. Maybe there's some new synergy with a synergy with Beast of Chaos as well, being able to take um take some bulk war in there as corn keyword. You know, I yeah, I've I've honestly thought about that as well as like um not buying any more Slave Stark and stuff, but buying Beast of Chaos. Because mm -hmm. like if people are watching and don't know, I have a a lot of slaves to darkness. Um, that's kind of it's been on my mind lately. Mm -hmm. But uh, then some folks are like, no, no, just dedicate it to a single god. And I was like, well, okay, <laughs> not hard to convince. Mm -hmm. Still, I mean, you have a bunch of chaos warriors surrounded by chaos knights, and uh, uh, our, what is that thing? The the war altar. Like this is an amazing looking set. Like regardless of how powerful it is, it's beautiful. In summary, I think I like it. Totally. Um, it's moving away. So as far as Zinch goes, like I played Zinch with mostly mortal stuff for a while, and I loved it. Just because Destiny dice are good with anything. <laughs> yeah, guaranteeing those like twelve inch shard, like using two sixes or whatever to guarantee that charge. Oh yeah. Unless somebody uses uh, malign portents, and that makes you reroll. Yeah, but you shouldn't do that because it endangers friendships. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got a question. Uh, this is off topic. Did you think my importance was a success? Who no. you're asking? Well, <laughs> well, um, I, I, I was super hyped for it, and I think I only played it twice. Yep. 
No, I don't think it was. I think it was a successful marketing campaign as far as selling the product. But um, if if they had held off on Malign Portents and, and unveiled it now that we have the cool stuff with like what Nagash is doing and like it, it seems more real because of Soul Wars and stuff like that, I think it would have been a much bigger success. Hmm. I mean, it, it was a success for them because I bought it. <laughs> you know, I spent the money, but I played it twice. And, uh, yes. and I was like, it was a lot to remember. But now looking in the second edition, I think my importance was a, a nice like preview. Yeah. The first edition was so easy. And now you have to remember a lot more stuff. And light importance seems like that where you had to remember a lot of stuff. You had to remember if the guy had a handlebar mustache and was riding his bike in order to <laughs> inside joke. Yeah. Anyway, so what about uh, you? So, so from my, my perspective, I think well, importance was like a great, um, uh, it was, you know, they do releases for casual players. They do releases for narrative players. They do releases for people who love models. And uh, for the people who like having books with lots of lore and interesting game mechanics, I thought that my first impression of my importance is I love the book, I love the art in it, and I loved having the cards. So like for having it on my shelf and in my collection, I really enjoyed it. Um, having played my skirmish campaign with it, I felt like it didn't wreck my campaign at all. My first impression was that it was really well balanced because I felt like each of the, the decks were re really well suited against each other. But having done a deep dive with the campaign, I realized it absolutely was not. <laughs> there, there are there are haves and there are haves nots. Yeah. Um, and once we figured out which one is the best, you know, with the whole Indiana Jones instant mortal wound guy that you sit down with your sword, um, I felt like it maybe it didn't have a really good place in competitive or campaign. So I think it's there for narrative and, and open play gamers mainly. And for that, it's a real treat. Yeah, I and I, I, I still think it's a good system. Like, I think it's self contained. If it came out, like I said, now. The problem is it came out at the tail end of first edition. And so I think a lot of folks look it over and don't even consider it anymore because they assume that it does not compatible. It's a hundred percent compatible. Mm -hmm. um, I just think because of the way they brought it out right before the game switched it. I don't know. I don't think it got as much uh, play as it, as, as it warranted. It was a good system. It's cool. Uh, does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Good. Yep. All right. All right. All right. Um, what are we doing? There's, there's a lot Excellent. of uh, like action in the chat. Uh, I don't know if we're missing questions or not. Okay, I can hop over there and check it out. Let's see here. Build a meat wall. Hashtag build a meat wall. That's that's it, everybody. <laughs> okay, coming off of screen share. Hey, everybody. Let's head over to the chat. We're gonna catch. Holy crap! There are we're missing a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to watch. I got a little distracted. To be honest, all these people are beautiful. Who do we got in there? We got. Let's do some shout outs. Uh, is there any way to see that the aggregate of everybody? Or I just have to start reading names. We got Kenzie McKeever in there. Kenzie left us some great feedback today on our video about my mouth breathing. <laughs> um, we have Mecha Knight in there. We got Oren Mesink. Um, Stephen Chan, Tyler Miller. Wow. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Yep, yep, yep. If anyone has a question, now's a great time to go ahead and ask it. Let's see. I don't think. Uh, Kinsey uh, uh, McKeever asks what our favorite factions were. Uh, mine would be Slanesh. Uh, it didn't always used to be. But uh, when I would got into, I played uh, Warhammer all growing up. And my brother got me into it, and I got back into it when uh, I saw the Juan Diaz Demonettes mm. in the early 2000s. And then uh, I was just like, oh, I got to get these, and I started playing again. And I never really liked any of the Chaos Gods, but went all in with Slanesh, and uh, that's my army. So I'm really excited what's coming out soon. Yeah, dude. Um, and that Harpist, ooh, that is old school. That thing is like, because I, you know, a lot of people feared that, you know, you know, with GW trying to, you know, they're trying to make money. And so they're, of course, going to try to target younger people. And parents wouldn't want their kids playing with, you know, a model that had eight boobs on one side. And is, but I think they, they don't care anymore. <laughs> that model. Yeah. 
Ooh. As a parent, I have a booklet that tells me how many boobs some people have <laughs> before I start to get offended by it. And uh, at first, it was one for a long time, but uh, now I'm I'm okay with uniboobs. <laughs> what I did love is that um, of the previews they showed us, I'm I'm kind of curious as to like how the multi kits are going to go. Oh, the multi kits. Um. So like the um, what are the the fiends? So um, it looks like they have a few different options as far as like heads and arms and tails and all that kind of stuff like that. So I'm kind of curious um, if they're going to have options for how the chest looks, because if you look at the example ones we've been shown, they all have four boobs, but they're all on the same side. Like both models have them on the left. There's a lot of lefty Lucy's, but not a lot of righty tighties. <laughs> and so <laughs> I was just kind of curious if, if they'll have different like torsos and stuff like that. I don't know. I'm kind of curious about that. Cause that's, that's a weird yeah. It's a weird detail to seem, um, I don't know, if you have like a bunch of models that all look the same, it looks, it seems kind of boring. It's like, it's a weird thing to complain about. Like, I wish my models had boobs on the right side too, but I don't, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I want to, you know, looking at the Rogue Trader releases, I'd like a robot with boobs, please. <laughs> the the uh, Futurama Fembots. Yeah. <laughs> like one, of those, one of the evil AI that's sneaking into the Blackstone Fortress. Oh my gosh, man. That robot is so stinking cool looking. It's got the Aquila. It can't be a traitor. You know, it's got exactly. the yeah. <laughs> I like to think he points at that and just says respect. Respect. <laughs> yes, yes. I am loyal. Do not look at me that way. Exactly. Um, I mean, that's they did... Um, Games Workshop did an announcement with that. What is it, what is the the post they have that's in character from the Imperial Guard? Um, oh, the um the regimental standard. Yes, regimental standard. Yes, I I like how it's written tongue in cheek and it's it's perfect. Yeah, did they ever? I think didn't they start one for AOS and then never did it anymore? Like they, I don't know. I thought they did. They have but a comic. Are you talking about the comics? No. So um, regimental standard is a thing where it's like a. Um, a weekly oh, yes, news yes, yes. update. Yeah. Uh, did, yeah, they had one about the uh, like the Beast of Chaos, right? Then they talked yeah, about. Yeah, that's what it was. It was like a like a warning uh, instructions about going too close to the woods at night or something ridiculous like that. Goats and whatnot. And then they ruined War Herd, and then we. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Don't get me started, Jack. <laughs> War Herd's my trigger word now. <laughs> Let them know how you feel. <laughs> I kind of want to hear about this. You never talked about it with me. Yeah, yeah. Doug, it's a long and sorted tale. <laughs> Ask the chat. Do you want to hear how uh, <laughs> <she's> about Warhurt? <Ward? laughs> it, it's, it works like this. At one point, and I looked at AOS as a new player, and I thought, oh, cool. You can take elite units from an old game and make an entire, entire army out of that. It seems ridiculous. And um, they had all these like requirements to make that army. And I thought, oh, cool, I'll make a neat boutique low model count army. And I made Warherd. And they were not great. <laughs> like The rules for them are like pretty hard to work with already. But they had some cool stuff. Um, and they had like, a battalion and everything. And then this general's handbook comes out. And they lose their keywords. And then uh, so the battalion doesn't work anymore. But they have these new rules for you know the allegiance of chaos. So you can kind of work around the shortcomings with buffs like Lord of War and the um, Crown of Command. Um, but then in the second General's Handbook came out, and then Lord of War got changed so that it only works on like one other unit, and you need to dice roll. And then the, <laughs> but you can still occasionally get a hot streak of dice going and blow something up in one turn with your cascading attacks. Mm -hmm. um, now, not necessarily like you know the attack generates another attack, but one attack generates another attack possibility. Totally. And you you know it usually the rules of one still, but you can still streak up and and blow up like a. Um, a frost lord on Stonehorn, which I've done. <laughs> Kill him in one combat round, and and uh, on a on a friend you're just meeting, and give them a totally the worst game of their life. Um, but <laughs> not that Hashtag. that happened to me specifically. Hashtag justice for Kelsey. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Kelsey. Um, <laughs> the, the, the book, right? What was that? That was pre Beast of Chaos book. That was pre Beast of Chaos, and then when the Beast of Chaos book came out, they don't do any additional tech. They just do Mortal Wound on top of it. So what they did is they basically made Warherd a lot less about luck and a lot more about strategy, which on, from a design level, I agree with. 
but from a dice level, like I'm I'm that I'm that dice player who loves the ha ha like you know the delightful moment of a hot streak. And out of like the hundred plus games I played with the word, it's only happened twice that they just streaked out. And one time was against you, Doug, when I blew up all of your zombies. Yeah, sixty um, sixty man blob of zombies just evaporated. Yeah, I think it did did almost forty wounds. You played death, Doug. When did you have sixty zombies? <laughs> yeah, Dude, he's I have. <laughs> He's played it all. I have played it all. I, I have not only played it all, I have owned it, traded it away, and painted most of yeah. it. <laughs> and it, just, it only, uh, only Bone Splitters is the one you, you regret, right? Um, Bone Splitters for AOS is the only one I regret. And then for 40K, it was my Dark Eldar, who I really did enjoy. I just uh, lost my job and needed to pay some bills. Mm-hmm. That Bone Splitters army not only looked great, but it was my Everest. <laughs> you beat it, though. I did not. I didn't do it right. <laughs> so I might have been able to beat it at one point. So for those who don't know, like I had this Bone Splitters army, and I had trouble finding people to play with me because they were like reading about how people were abusing the Cun and Ruck online in stupid ways and firing like three hundred arrows a turn, and it took like two hours to get a shooting phase done. It was ridiculous. But uh, Mark is an awesome person, and was like, "I'll play you," and then he brought a. Gaunt Summoner put him on a disc so that no one could touch him and then just nuked away my entire army <laughs> turn by turn. I stuck him in the corner of the table, way on the corner on a bill and vortex. What a jerk. And since this is right. my channel, I demand my fans give me pity by being the guy who's like, hey, no one lets me play this army. And then my fr- good friend Mark is like, I'll let you play it. And then totally jams me in a locker. <laughs> I remember you uh, mentioning that before, how people refuse to play you and whatnot. And I was so confused. I'm like, why? That sounds horrible. Mm-hmm. And so, like, like, but I wouldn't want to play, if I was had a casual game, I wouldn't want to play against my Stormcast tournament list. Oh, totally. Not a fun list to play against. It's just, it's like I yeah. couldn't have done anything. But just, yeah. <laughs> so I would get that more, but it's just mean. Like, no, I'm not going to play you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I still, uh, I still wouldn't do that with anyone. However, like, it's no like your shooting cast. Right? If you were to walk up and be like, "Doug, I want to play this against your Slaves to Darkness," like we both know how that's going to pan out. I would probably just say up front, like, "Okay, you get the most out of your shoot cast. I'm just going to have fun, right?" It would just set the expectations, but I'll still play you. I don't, yeah. I, don't I can't fathom. Yeah, Doug, our mutual friend Thomas, um, no Nicholas, you know him, Nick. Nick yep. Tom. He uh he told me the be- he coined the phrase turn zero and I've been using this a lot. Like on turn zero, you should just have a conversation with the other player and say like, okay, what kind of game are we having today? And if the other person's like, look, I you know I want to stretch my legs on this tournament list. I really got to get some the rules under my fingers. Do you mind if I just kick you around the table for a while? Like mm-hmm. that should be okay. Like just have that be an okay thing and let them be them and and uh, their fun is not wrong. Like, just talk about the kind of game you're going to have so that you're not, like, blindsiding them. You don't want to set up with your beautifully painted wanderers and have someone go, surprise! <laughs> Lol. Uh, yeah. um, so, I'm not that any wanderers can't be competitive, but they just can't. <laughs> I, I'm, 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 there's, there's actually a proof behind this. All you have to do is read their water scrolls. You can tell by the way they are. I agree with that. I think that's a good turn zero. That's probably a good thing. I'm starting to sound like a Seraphon player. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag she's making wonders. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. It was a good trip to memory. Yeah, so I did um uh, see when it's actually about when I started the channel, I had met a guy in Marysville, this town north of here, who um was getting rid of some death stuff and I met him to grab like, I don't know, some Vargas or something like that. And he was like, you know, I thought about it and I just want this crap out of my garage. And so he gave me like several hundreds of dollars worth of death stuff for like 60 bucks. Um, but it was in kind of weird states of repair. Like a lot of things were broken and weapons were smashed off and stuff like that. So it was in rough shape. And so I built a few things, but this is like, I don't think the legions of Nagash book came out for like two years. It was like, when the game first came out type stuff. Um, so yeah, eventually I just got rid of it, <laughs> but I did <laughs> at one point have a massive death army. <laughs> mm-hmm. And how many armies ago was that? Oh, many. 
<laughs> it, was, it was many. Okay, what did you, you trade that to get or sold to get? Because I, I met you, when I met you, you were playing Stormcast. Yeah, I think, okay. I think you went to 40k land for a while, Doug. I did. I did. I think uh, some of the death stuff I did trade off to get maybe Admech. No, that seems too far away. Space Wolves? <laughs> Mm. <laughs> <The journal. laughs> <laughs> okay okay let me okay i'm gonna try i'm gonna try to do my my growth chart here so aos came out i had high elves back when the game like literally first came out and everything was com- like what we would now call compendium mm-hmm. and then, um i didn't like how they split the army into bajillion pieces i stand by that that's probably the the least hard trade i've ever made <laughs> so i got rid of those I think at that point I went back to playing War Machine and Hordes for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and then came back with my first Slaves to Darkness that I made all Nurgle. I don't know if you remember that, Mark. I do. Yeah. I green stuffed yeah. every person in a unit of Chaos Warriors. And then it gets hazy. Uh, pretty soon after, I know I did Bone Splitters. I had Death. I had. Space Wolves, Necrons. Yeah. Stormcast, because I had I had a bunch of Stormcast. Beast Claw Raiders, but I only had that for like a week. I uh by the way, while you're thinking back to the Wayback Machine, I took a picture of the game where I I <laughs> I beat the cut and ruck with the wizard at the corner of the table. It was January 5th, 2017. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> my Instagram is like my my Age of Sigmar journal, and, uh, and I'm, what I'm doing is I'm looking back for um, my game with you with the zombies. I've taken pictures of almost all of our games. That's which, awesome. So, yeah. Well, you have probably have a much better memory of my army because you have pictures, photographic evidence <laughs> of all the stuff right. I owned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm just trying to think back. I think it was before. Yeah, before the the big. Th- Four way we had with uh, Dylan and Brent at Mox, if you remember that one. I do. That was a lot of fun. I think well, yeah. I was playing Bone Splitters then too. That was yeah, October 2016. You had you had uh, <laughs> teamed up with my Skaven, and you're like, uh, I had tunneled underground, but I couldn't get out of the ground. I was lost underground. You're like, are you gonna show up? I'm like, yeah, totally, man. I'm gonna show up. It's gonna be great. <laughs> I <Sorry, laughs> pop out of the ground, and get killed instantly. <laughs> this feels like. When when you say like you don't have a problem with drinking, and then your family brings up how much drinking you've just done, <laughs> that's how <laughs> that's how I feel right now talking about the number of armies. <laughs> yeah, what's your Instagram in case people want to come uh, look at those? I'm at Instagram slash Telefed. I can put it in the chat. Yeah, dude, go for it. Oh man. So yeah. Anyway, maybe yeah. <laughs> maybe Beast of Chaos. I don't know. Yeah. I'm all over the place. Um, coming up next week, so next Saturday, there is a big um, miniatures swap meet. It's like boards and miniatures games. A bunch of people like in, I don't know, I feel like we've seen a few guys from Portland come all the way up here, but um, a couple hour radius come together and just swap armies. But I got a great deal on some stuff last year. I bought it specifically to, to sell it online, basically, like garage sales. Um, Flipping, but uh, <laughs> flip this model. <laughs> pretty, yeah. <laughs> Why? Why not? <laughs> I I'm certainly better than some of the quote unquote pro painted stuff you see on eBay. So if I get oh. a little bit of, out of enjoyment out of it and I sell it for exactly much as I bought it, that's cool. <laughs> that is cool. Um. So yeah, I'm gonna do that, and then I'm gonna be on the lookout for any kind of fantasy armies because. I want to start accruing a collection for opponents to have in house. So, like, I'm gonna be doing battle reports here behind me here pretty quick. And so, um, I have obviously have Slaves of Darkness. I have Night Haunt, obviously. Um, you mentioned you're looking for free guild stuff. Or is there a because I have a lot of old Empire stuff, mm-hmm. but it's like early 2000s, and I don't know when their last model update was. And so, like, I'm a snob. Like, besides Juan Diaz, if it ain't the newest, you better get that stuff away from me. Uh, so, do you care about older models? No, as long as it has a current war scroll and uh, preferably not made of metal. That's pretty much... 
I just hate I hate working with metal models so much. Yeah. Yeah. Unless it's a if it's a hero in a cool pose, I'm awesome. If it's a horse, get it, burn it, <laughs> melt it down into a lead bullet like William Wallace did in the Patriot or whatever. I don't care. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was so specific. <laughs> I just I don't know why. I don't know. Probably because I have so many miniatures in my life. But that image of him melting his kid's little miniature soldier into a bullet, I was like, that is so metal. <laughs> Wallace, that's it's really oh, tall. No, no, no. William Wallace was was Braveheart, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 It was. Yeah, it was Mel Gibson in the Patriot, though. So he might as well have been William Wallace. <laughs> I can't remember. I know it was the Swamp Fox is the name of the character he was trying to be. Yeah, I don't remember. Yeah, he was in the Patriot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> in seventeen seventy six, when Mad Max fought off. <laughs> It was great. It was like right after that, he went on a rant about the Jews. It was awesome. <laughs> yeah, uh, that was all in a voicemail, I think. That was, uh, <laughs> yeah, something about his wife and him selling his Laker tickets. It was bizarre. <laughs> so much better when he's in when it's in a voicemail format. <laughs> tickets. Yeah. <clears throat> That's awesome. Uh, let's see here. It's just one of those things. Like, did you not think I was going to put this on the internet? Because I mean, I'm yeah, putting this on the internet. Yeah, what a <laughs> ding dong. <laughs> <laughs> Are we going to look at more of these star collecting sets, or what's? Uh, did we go through them all? Uh, we actually did. The only thing we didn't touch on is where we would expand with the Slaves to Darkness one. I thought there was like pen sets and stuff that were part of the holiday bundle, but maybe not. Oh, you want you want to go through like all the stuff? Well, settle down, Chew. <laughs> <laughs> Content? What's wrong with you? All of a sudden, this just became real work. Oh, let me How see if I can talk. How you talk about product? <laughs> yeah, it's a hobby. Uh, I guess, fingers crossed for Darko stuff. Uh, you know, there's not a lot of, you know, that's you know, more knights, maybe? Knights are, aren't terrible. You get, well, yeah, Darko great. Reminds, reminds me of something. Can we talk about that for a minute? Where, like, the direction, what, like, who's the next big bad? I feel like death just had its day. Uh, so destruction, like so, Moon Clan is the next army. It, what it seems like, and they say 2019 is the year of destruction, and all signs are pointing to Slanesh as well. So, um, I, I go Moon Clan should be the next one. Yeah. Well, I know that in order for Slanesh to have its like big reveal, I know that Slanesh is like next, um, but I don't know how they work out Slanesh becoming freed without answering the story of what happens to the elves. Um, I, so I feel like they're at least going to talk about that mm. or they're going to leave Slanesh in jail and have the pretenders or the three factions of... Is, help me, Jack. Is it three factions or two factions that are vying for power of the, over the Slanesh Dominion? There's three. There's the Seekers, Pretenders, and the Judicators. No, no. <laughs> the Judic Judicators? <laughs> Why am I drawing a blank? I'm Slanesh guy. Uh, right I you, the bus. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, you put me on the spot, but there's three. Yeah. Okay, so there's three Slanesh factions. So it's cool to keep all three of those factions in, or they could just free Slanesh and then, you know, have those factions still be a thing. Um, but I, I feel like they can't really advance the story of Slanesh without saying what's going on with Tyrion, what's going on with his elves. Um, are, are, are his elves elves anymore? Are they going to be something new? I'm hoping they have something elfy. <clears throat> Just saying. What would you, what would you want from that? Me? Yeah. Um. So, what I think, um, what I think they've done with elves so far, with the the daughters of Cain and with the Ideneth, um, I feel like those aren't really elves. Like the daughters of Cain are kind of like, um, you know, corn, and then. Like you know, corn 2.0, and then <laughs> um, the Ideneth are, are merfolk, man. I mean, uh, that's just, um, there's no two bits about that. They're totally merfolk, um, which is great. I think that's awesome that they're breaking it. Like they've taken the coconut of uh, fairy lore and kind of cracked it open for more, like to make room for more cool fairy stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and as a fantasy gamer, I love that stuff. I mean, I love the idea of like going down, you know, the the fairy lore tunnel like where there be uh like the she and the red caps or the you know whatever factions you can think of the hulavok uh, all that stuff is like really big for me um 
but I'd like to see like nobility. I'd like to see what happened to, um, you know, the, you know, Tyrion's uh, beings of light, you know, um, I kind of like to see what happens with the next kingdom. And I'd like to see them be actual elves and not um, some kind of reforged thing. Um, unless they're actually elven stormcast, which I'm totally on board for. Like that's a warrior, ch- warrior chamber. I'm eager to see the elven chamber. Uh, yeah. Yeah, sure. Bring them on. Stormcast elves, I'm down. I'm ready to buy. I want, see, I'm the only way. I want Stormcast dwarves. Right? Just, just little half halflings, just like little iron reckoning. Halflings? Balls. I'm adding you to the book. The dwarves are not halflings. No, I get what you're saying. Um, but yeah, see, totally. here's the thing. If you take a normal-sized human, right, and you blow him up to make him really big and be a Stormcast, what do you do when you have a Duard and you blow him up. He's still just this awkward little squat, but he's just he's still six squats, but he's eight asses wide. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's funny. He's ready to crush. You think we're ever gonna see Chaos Stormcast? Hmm. Yeah. So I don't know. I for a while I had um I was working on this narrative campaign where um, the Stormcast player has the Lord Celestion on Draco. And um, every time they die in battle, they, they were reduced to zero wounds. So basically, they get an inch toward chaos. So the, the lore behind it is that um, while fighting Zinch, um, they faced a greater demon of Zinch, and Zinch itself whispered a great lie into his ear, which made him deaf to Ezer. So uh, he can no longer reach Ezir. When these other Stormcasts find him, he's been separated from his brothers, and he's got this Drekoth that's on the edge of its life, and he's been running around in the wilderness, basically, kind of like with Amnesia. And so these Stormcasts are like, we got to get this guy back to Azir, but they have to walk him back through Realm Gates. That if he, if they lose lose him by being, um, by being slain, they don't know what will happen to him. They realize that he's been turned by Chaos. So we know that people can become Chaos and become Stormcast. That's the first time we've seen a bad guy become a good guy in any of the Warhammer lore with Torglug. Um, right. But we, we, I don't think we've seen uh, like somebody going, getting corrupted by chaos and then be, going back to being reforged um, after they were reforged once. So uh, for what it's worth, I painted one of my Blight Kings with gold armor saying that, you know, he's just a Stormcast with the uh, with Nurgle's rat, and one day he's going to get killed in the field of battle, and he's going to zap up, and all the other players will be like, "What happened to Ernie?" Oh, that's um, awesome. Yeah, but the uh, I think, um, and in fact, that one of my Black Kings has blue armor after he's one of Jack's arm casts. I got one of his guys too. <laughs> um, in the Soul Wars book, it did, they didn't go. The, uh, Stormcast didn't go to chaos. Spoiler alert. Um, mm-hmm. But death did. Uh, you know, make a Stormcast into one of their minions, Nagash did. So uh, I could see maybe, like, one of the Chaos Gods, you know, definitely corrupting a Stormcast guy into worshiping, worshiping them again. Sure. I, yeah, I think that's totally within the fiction. Um, I don't know about, like, Stormcast Chaos itself, though, like, the, like where, they, where they die and they get reforged in, in the realm of, uh, you know, of Chaos. I don't know how that would work, but I'm, I'm ready. You know, I'm receptive for, you know, Chaos Marines. <laughs> Let's totally. Just say what it is. Um, I'm ready for, you know, the Chaos Marines to come out. Also, the third uh, uh, Slanesh army is Invaders. Invaders. Nice. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Uh, I was racking my brain and I had to go look it up. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, it was interesting. So, in uh, Soul Wars, so. Uh, avert your ears if anyone hasn't read that book, but I feel like most of my people have. Um, uh, Nagash captures a Stormcast and warps it, and he calls him a Death Lord, which is it's kind of a unique thing because it's been referenced in other books. What I like there is he basically takes the soul of the Stormcast and like tears it apart and reforms it into something else. But when they see him in the book, he doesn't look like a Stormcast. He's a totally different body. He looks like a... Um, Maybe, uh, not a Lord Executioner. I'm trying to think of a hero in Night Haunt, but huh? Mm-hmm. Big Locks. Hmm. Big Locks is the name I gave to the Brent's Night Haunt hero. The the 
the guy with carrying big locks. <laughs> <laughs> There's a, is it the jailer? Well, yeah, the he's the jailer. What is he Spirit called? Torment. Yes, Spirit Torment, I think. I know stuff. <laughs> I know. You know stuff. Big locks. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. We're only two great AOS channels trying to get the name of a guy named Big Lock. It's, it's not like it's <laughs> it's not like it's our thing or anything. Spirit so, torment. Thank you, Kenzie. See Spirit torment. Kind of stuff. Anyway, I, I was frantically trying to Google it. And I ended up on a Reddit article with the beautifully painted night hunt, and I'm like, you know, I'm just gonna look at this until somebody. <laughs> <does it." laughs> yeah. Chat is basically Google Plus Plus. Thank you, chat. <clears throat> that is funny. Okay. So the battle forces are done. Was there any other questions that uh, we had to answer? Um, let me see. You're looking I'm, playing, in uh, I'm playing 40K tomorrow. Oh, that's Ooh. right. Ugh. Don't want to. I'm, uh, maybe I can just convince him to play AOS. <laughs> 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 Doug was... What? supposed to be there to kind of <laughs> to help me through so what are you what are you playing in 40k exactly or uh, which armies i picked up uh, he's playing space marines i think mm -hmm. and i just i picked up the demon book since i have so many demons oh, okay okay so i don't have to buy anything i think you'll be pleasantly surprised that demons work very similarly get in a get into melee yeah, yeah. <laughs> get into trouble what um what don't you like about 40k? Um I don't know. It's just I don't know. It's just I look at the books. It does it seems uh, uninviting. Just the aesthetic. I've I've always been more into fantasy than sci-fi. And uh it's like I'd rather be good at one game than okay at two. That's fair. Mm -hmm. Um for me, uh, you know, playing 40K as a boy, uh, eventually my group just became so competitive that um, mm. that winning was beyond was more important than fun for that group. So with the group disintegrating on me, I had no reason to play it anymore, and I quit. But um, coming back in AOS, like you had no choice but to have fun because there's no rules for points. Ha! Ah, take that, competitive <laughs> gamers. Um, That's like but, the, you got me there meme. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got me there. Yeah. <laughs> can't have deep thoughts with no brain. <laughs> um, so, uh, but, but like uh, looking at a 40K, you, you know, I just had to, um, I had to pick one system or the other and my, and my nine-year-old chose for me and I landed on AOS. Um, but I would, I'm, you know, I'm working on a 40k army. It's very slowly, but surely, but I will never have enough armies to do, uh, to make interesting bat reps for them. So totally, um, it, you know, not without having like somebody new every time, uh, come play my custodes, which I don't think anybody wants to see. <laughs> okay. So it's custodes against what again, you know, mm -hmm. I get that the same thing. Now I, for AOS. The thing, one of the things I love about AOS is that there's so many mix and match factions that you can have, you know, three thousand points worth of one army and build three or four lists out of that, and it's all yeah. cool, cool games. Totally. I um, I didn't like 40k for the longest time. I think list building is a chore. I think it's awful. Um, and you know, interesting that you said it's uninviting, Jack. I think that's actually probably one of the biggest things about it. I mean. So I don't watch a lot of uh, Gorilla Miniature Gaming. Um, I just no real reason for it. But one of the things he did when the Maggot King of Nurgle came, book came out is he held in one hand the the Chaos Demons book for 40k, which has it's, it's their Nurgle stuff mostly, um, their demons at least, and then the Maggot King of Nurgle book, and he just kind of compared the two, and I thought it was extremely interesting that. Like with Maggotkin, we get this like super flavorful depiction of Nurgle and what he's doing in the realms and like how to theme your army. And there's variety because you can have rot bringers and mortal Nurgles and demons and they're all cool things going on. And it's just a lot of flavor and life and color to the to the game that added to Age of Sigmar. And then the same thing if you hold up the Demons Codex, 
it does feel very lifeless. It doesn't feel fun. It feels like a rules manual, but not a, a fun, get you excited about the army type thing. So I think you're right. I think it's, it is uninviting in the sense that like, if you don't like the match play stuff, that codex is no fun to read. If you mm. don't care about Magikin of Nurgle as a faction, the Magikin of Nurgle book is still fun to read. Like, yeah, I don't know. A lot of good stuff in there. Yeah. It's cool. So I, I don't know. That's yeah. and that's that's where I struggle. Like I even have the orc codex. I've been playing a lot of orc stuff. Painted a ton of it. If you want to check it out on Instagram, in the link below. But like, um, that's great. It that's doesn't. Great. It doesn't have the same life as my Slaves of Darkness army. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't know. William Furby mentions Kill Team in chat here, and um, I have to admit that I'm super intrigued by Kill Team. I love the fact that. Um, they are limiting you to just like one trip choice, one semi elite choice, but they've seemed to have been th really thoughtful choices that you can pick from. Mm -hmm. uh, usually the two units that are the alt build that come in the box. So in the case of like Admech, it's the Rust Dockers and the uh, Sakarin, Sakarin, Sakarian, Sakarians, the machine gun guys. Yes. Um, guys, little team P, uh, Tech Nines, uh, the robot gangsters. <laughs> um, robot gangsters. <laughs> robot gangsters. <laughs> Uh, so they, I, I, and they, they have like this crazy, almost AOS level here, use a hero for an extra hundred points and play, you know, uh, commando with Arnold Schwarzenegger, <laughs> like, yeah. you know, he's running around killing people with knives and, and the other people are just falling over off of the top of like, it's just like an action move from the eighties, like yeah. just dropping from the top of railings and stuff. I think kill team is very intriguing to me and I'd love to see, it, um, you know, I'm, I am planning to start Kill Team. Uh, I'm just going slow with all my AOS projects, of totally. course. I promise to play you with it, though, Doug. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be on the channel. Um, cause I'm, I'm super excited about it. I love... But see, here's the thing, though. Like The reason I like Kill Team is because that rules manual adds more flavor and, and color to the universe of 40K than any of the codex. Yeah. Do. You know what I'm I mean? Like, I'm, it does. You're right, it does. I'm, I'm shocked with the, how how well thought out it is. Like they did movement differently. They did line of sight differently. They did um, a lot of stuff differently than 40K. It's a different game. It's it's everything I wanted Skirmish to be. <laughs> that, that is true. <laughs> Close to home, buddy. Close to home. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I wish you could play demons in Kill Team. Yeah. But the, you know, the, you can't. Um, mm. Well, so so here's the difference in their lore, right? So in 40k, um, when demons come through, it's like there's a rift in the warp, or like some part of the universe tears open super violently and they pour out. But once that door closes, all the demons dissipate, kind of like they did in fantasy battles. Mm -hmm. But in Age of Sigmar, demons are much more like solid. Um, yeah. In the Gash Undying King, there's just a plague bear dude just walking around. He's just been walking around for forever. You know what I mean? Like. Mm -hmm. in, a, in the same sense as a Stormcast, he knows when he dies, he goes back to uh, the gar Nurgle, Nurgle's garden. But like he can just do whatever. And so the reason that there's no in, in Kill Team is that there's no miniature warp rift opening up. Yeah, it would be it'd be the entire planet or nothing. Exactly. Yeah, it would consume everything. Well, thank you. Now I know. Yeah. I didn't realize that the, there was a, a reason for lore behind it. I thought, you know, just in general, all melee warbands wouldn't really be that much fun. Um, that's kind of what demons end up being. Uh, but uh, I, do, I, knew, I do know there's lots of people that run all commando warbands that just go in and chop people up. So oh, yeah. maybe so, I'm wrong. <laughs> one of the best um, one of the things with commanders is that if you do the gene stealer cults, you can have a, uh, a patriarch, which is just their mega huge gene stealer, but he's like 190 points. So he is he is your list. Like at a 200 point game of kill team, he's it. But he's also yeah. like he's like fighting the queen monster from Alien. From Aliens, yeah. <laughs> Get away from her, you bitch. Uh, maybe that's the um, maybe that's like the parallel I'm looking for here. And that's yeah, that's not the reason. <laughs> Interesting. <clears throat> But you know, I mean, but that's the kind of the thing. Like, that's one of the reasons that, like, I when I think about doing demons and stuff like that, like, I, I'm much more interested in the AOS because they can be around to have character and character arcs, and they can still mm -hmm. I don't know, 
you know, names and backstory. And- exactly. Like, yeah, I don't, I don't care about, you know, this, the, the bloodthirster with three X's in his name. <laughs> I'm not going to try and pronounce, make it up, but whatever. And then like, you know, cause he's just going to blink back to the warp in two seconds and 40 K, but in AOS, he'll be here for a while. Just like a Lord yeah. of change will creep in the shadows for months behind his people. And yeah, the, I, I get the feeling that in AOS and mortal realms are um, not that much different from the realm of chaos. You know, like that, that it's just, it's almost in terms of like their magical potency, almost in parallel. So mm. like, they're just a, a kind of shards of each other. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. So what about you, Doug? What's your, what's your dream army right now? My dream army right now? Um, yeah. Like what's the, what's the army you want them to come out with in AOS? Oh, uh, I'm torn, like, in terms of lore, what I want the most is free people. Because I think that would shed a lot more light on the realms and, like, people can relate to that faction. And I think it would just be a really cool stuff. I think the books that would come out, like the Black Library novels, with characters based on that battle tone would be incredible. Like, mm-hmm. I think it would really bring in some folks who walked away from the game or not even just walked away, but just were disinterested because it felt too hard to grasp. Right. Just having more human protagonists like that. Um, as far as what I want personally, like for my own collection and junk, uh, Dark Oath stuff. Assuming, I don't know, assuming that Dark Oath is, is what I hope it is, which is just a general chaos undivided. If Dark Oath comes out and it's not what I think it is, uh, I'm just going to go to Beast of Chaos. Mm. Like 100% because I want to be able to do the battalion thing and take all the different marks and that stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. It does. So, yeah, I mean, if Dark Oath is the upgraded Slaves to Darkness where it's undivided, but you can take the benefits of all of them, I'm down. Mm-hmm. Um, and if not, I will be a true Beast of Chaos player and not just focus on Boar Herd or Bray Herd like you and Brent. <laughs> do it all. <laughs> yeah, do it all. I think that's the way to play them is to have a little bit of everything. Um, or at least the Gorgons. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Gorgons get work done. Mm-hmm. Gorgons <laughs> like to have intercourse. <laughs> call back. Morning. Call back. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Jack, have you said your dream army? What your dream army is? Like the, the next one that you hope they do? Uh, besides the stuff that's already announced, um, I, I, it baffles me that Skaven wasn't one of the first. Or oh my goodness, yes. Like, didn't happen in 2017 or something like that. It's like, triggering me again. Especially <laughs> that, like, there's no rumors about Skaven getting an update or nothing. And it seems like it doesn't wouldn't require too much work. I would like to maybe see even a change in the GHB just to tide Skaven players over. Like, hey, guess what? Clan rats are battle line. For everybody, yeah. Uh, Anything, sort of. <clears throat> yeah, just making verminous keywords, um, like given given the the storm vermin, clan rats, and warlord a keyword, like that's it, you're done. That's the given yeah. book. Do it. I assume there's like there's got to be some sort of, because it, they're it's a smart company. They want to make money, so maybe I they didn't they don't sell as well as I thought they sold or something like that. They probably sell fine on their own. That's why they're not updating. It's like they sell. Oh, yeah. They probably beat all the all the elf factions, and mm. you know. So why bother? Fair enough. <laughs> um, Kinsey says rerolling ones. Planning on doing a narrative campaign at any point. Um, maybe work with Doug on his. Mm. Did I show you with me my my idea about attacking the city? Show me now. What? Show, show me now. Oh, okay. Hold on a second. Let me... What? <laughs> it, it worked. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> you were supposed to be here for my convenience of not talking to myself for two hours. <laughs> I listened to that episode, so I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Okay, so I will bring up my screen again. Don Rocco cries and wonder. I'm sorry, buddy. All right. Oh, wow. <gasps> Look at the diagram. So, so here's my city. <laughs> I like it. Um, 
basically the idea was having a narrative campaign. This is a, a city generator thing. I can put the link in the description of the video, but um, it's like a randomized whatever. And the idea being having a series of games, like three to four games max, uh, about the siege of forces on this city. So my original idea was um, forces of order and then my slaves of darkness come in and attack it. And it was pointed out to me that, hey, I'm in the middle of painting a whole bunch of Night Haunt. Why not have uh, death versus chaos? Because I would already have those things ready to go. Mm -hmm. um, so the idea would be a chaos citadel and then being attacked by the undead. And so the idea of just creating a series of games that kind of map out the, those events. So maybe a fight outside the gates, maybe a skirmish game where they open a gate, um, and then more climactic games inside while they're trying to like take the market or take the castle kind of thing. Yeah, you could do something with like, uh, you know, some assassins have snuck in to try to kill their leader and you know, have another one where the fight occurs on a wall and another one a fight, you know, in a sewer, you know, that kind totally. of thing. Do cool yeah. stuff with that. That's a cool thing. Like, I mean, it's, what I'm mapping out here is like the idea of I can be as um, micro and macro as I want. Like I, this one I did outside the gates and then one or two fights inside. But you can, if you have the means and the terrain, like have a fight at each one of these locations, have a fight at the temple and fight at the market, the docks. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I like it. Um, now, just as a you know, word of warning, it's a wonder if we have two armies fighting each other a lot. Like the, the, they get pretty samey. And when, you know, Brent did a really great thing during the Art Skirmish campaign where he named all of his dudes. I never got around to doing that, but, I mean, they never earned their name. <laughs> um, but it, by, by naming the dudes, people can kind of get to learn those models. Mm -hmm. Viewers can learn the models and, like, build their own narrative for them. And, and that, not that people are writing lore for you or anything like that, but, like, it's, you know, oh, that was the the Tree Revenant that passed his armor state four rounds in a row. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, like Cordell. Like, yeah, exactly. I mean, I mean, Cordell, yes, Cordell the famous. Uh, like, would you do these bat reps similar to the bat rep you did for your channel before, with the uh, the plague rat and whatnot? I thought that was really good. You like that one? So that one was um, somewhat of a ripoff of the frontline gaming ones I did forever ago. Go for it, world! <laughs> uh, you mean um, the narrative bat rep they did, right? That was exactly. Crazy. Yeah. So if you haven't seen those, I really go check it out. If you type in Age of Sigmar narrative battle report, they're the first ones that come up, um, and they're interesting. Where they're like. I think they're only like 17 minutes long. I mean, it, it really is storytelling more than it is a battle report per se. Oh, for sure. Um, mine was a little more heavy on the on the dice action, showing you what the rolls were and that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, uh, maybe. I'm going to kind of tinker around with it, and that's kind of why um, in all the iterations I thought about this, having the first game be sort of a generic game outside of the walls, so I can at least like try different stuff during that game. It is a primer. Um, yeah. So that is that is the general idea. I think I do want to do that, especially because, like, I just don't think people are going to watch me for two hours. <laughs> <laughs> people always get to, like, a certain point in the video. And yeah. I, I did it to poor Wargamer Girls watching her latest battle report. And I think I skipped to about 75% through. She's like, did you just skip? <laughs> like, yep. I know. You totally got me. called you out. You got me. Um, she's great. If you get a chance to watch her, watch her. She's awesome. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I mean, I think um, you know, I, I'm I, I'm leaving myself open to have different types of things. Like, I want to do um, mostly narrative stuff because you know it's on brand for me. But uh, in addition to that, doing also like every once in a while, just trying to do a more competitive thing, see, seeing stuff. Um, but those would be clearly labeled like grudge match or something like that, like some kind of moniker to let it know that this is the kind of thing you can expect when you watch it. So I have a feeling like speaking, like trying to do competitive stuff on for bat reps. I have a feeling like if I do get by shoot cast painted and play it on three rolling ones, it's going to get a lot of like thumbs down. Because I don't know how much if people like those games or like I I don't know I like the pillow fisted games. Yeah, <laughs> or you have suboptimal armies fighting each other. Yeah, I think if you started the video by expressing exactly what you're going to do, like, hey, 
in this game, we're going to try, you know, take the gloves off, put the brass knuckles on, um, watch it, and then give us feedback so we can get better. I think that sets the tone differently than, like, just jumping into a game where it's one side. I mean, that's kind of the thing. Um, we all watch many more gaming stuff on our channel. There's been a, lot, a, f- a few battle reports come out lately where it's just so one-sided that, like, you're like, oh, I like those two factions. You click on the video and you see it's 18 minutes long, and you're like, oh. oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh. See, and I, so I, I, that's happening with their Firestorm campaign. I, I really sympathize yeah. with that. Um, yeah. I know that they're, that Firestorm specifically has like a runaway points mechanic where it does. Uh, deeper in the campaign you go, you're looking at like, you know, thousand point delta between the two armies. So, um, yeah, but yeah. that's not what it's about. It's Firestorm is about the fight and yeah. not about the balance of the fight and so yeah a lot of people are just focusing on trying to keep the game balanced and it's going to be asymmetrical anyways so oh yeah, yeah. no well my, go with my, it my, my my comment had less to do with asymmetry which i enjoy uh but more to do with um entertainment levels of yeah there, there's a point of asymmetry where you're like what what <laughs> what's going on that? yeah yeah where and not every video can be the last stand <laughs> oh, exactly. Because so yeah. we'll be back next week with another last day. <laughs> we'll see who's about to die next time. Yeah. It's, no, me no. <laughs> it's me again. You say it's me again. <laughs> it's you. <laughs> yeah. I've been thinking, I'm trying to think of a video format for Jack. That, so we just, just so we can use the term jackhammer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, another episode of Jackhammer. I was wearing the uh, the flannel, and someone was like, "Had the tournament." It's like, "Hey, it's lumberjack." I was like, "Go, you go away." <laughs> Somebody make a meme of lumberjack. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, next time you play Sylvaneth, you'll you will be lumberjack. There you go. Mark, what what is your favorite army of the ones that you have right now? Hmm. Like, what do you enjoy playing the most? I, I have to look at the case. Um, oh, the one. Uh, the, okay, this you're not going to like this answer, probably, but uh, I like playing probably my um, bone splitters the most. Really? I feel like, yeah, for a small thousand point army, they have an interesting variety of units. They have a wargog prophet who's super interesting as a leader. Yeah. Yes. Um, there's uh, the Maniac Poor Boys. There's a, a unit of, uh, you know, Big Blob of Regular Boys. They have synergy. They have interesting rules behind them. They have little gimmicks they can pull. They have, I've allied in the, the War Boss who has the banner. Um, and that thing's like, you know, like the corn standard, but it moves every turn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, there's no command point behind it. He just does it. Um, gets everybody an extra attack. That's cool. Yeah, I think they're they're probably my favorite army to play right now. They're a little pillow fested, as Jack would say, but they're probably my favorite to play right now. Well, Jack would say that they're a twenty thirteen army, so yeah. we'll do, <laughs> <certainly are. laughs> Obama army. You won't <laughs> yeah. Exactly. yeah. Yeah. What about you, Jack? What's what's you my favorite army? Play? Play? Yeah, what are you playing right now? Uh, I'm having a lot of fun with my Stormcast. I have like this is like um, Put it on my Instagram, but I paint. This guy's almost done. This uh, Lord of Change. I was painting him up for um, Firestorm, Firestorm, which we uh, we kind of postponed. It's it's up in the air if we're going to do it or not. Um, just seeing how many it, it turned out with mini war gamings, and because it could really suck because we were <laughs> we were just about to get started, and they started doing Firestorm, and then uh, we you know we had real life stuff come up, so we had to postpone it. Now seeing how theirs turned out, where it's you know it's I guess not it seems fun, but it's just not as I guess you know a lot of one-sided games going on. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's pro- probably great fun to play, probably not awesome to watch. To watch, yes. And so this guy, uh, and so I'm I got excited about Zinch, Ooh. but I am uh, I'm I want to get my Stormcast done, and then I'll finish this guy up. He's almost done. And then I might do a little nice little thousand point Zinch army build up from there. But I like it. At some point, we'll, Jack, we will have to do Zinch versus Zinch on the channel. Oh, yeah. We're, we're both working on one. So, deception dice. 
<laughs> Deception. Of Deception. Can we do uh, Zinch Mortals versus Zinch Demons at some point? That sounds fun. Ooh. I think we both have demons. Oh, I have I have enough. Uh, yeah, the channel hasn't seen my my Slaves of Darkness yet, oh, so yeah. I have like I think a crate. But you know, did see your uh, your uh, Slaves of Darkness? Bill Clinton, he saw all those models. He did. He did. <laughs> Like just just for what it's worth, like some of those guys were assembled while I was listening to a new Nirvana record. So, <laughs> uh, put something in your ear there. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> a new Nirvana record. Yeah. Like a greatest hits. No. <laughs> no man, it was new. Like Mr. Griggs is probably four. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, the uh, they're all the, you know the hunched over chaos warrior guys with the stupid hats and the they all look like orcs. Yep. You know the ones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I love those guys. Yeah, they're, they're the real round bases, which is awesome. And I did put them on round bases except for the, except for the cavalry, and uh, I think I played you, Jack, with them. And was it you I played against? Yep. You had the Maw Crusher out there, and I charged the Maw Crusher with like 12 ponies. And I got them all in there because they're on squares. And you're like, oh, that's cool. You got them all in. <laughs> yeah, they're on squares. And then you ate all of them. Yep. <laughs> Every single one, like down to the horse tail and the hooves. It was gross. That's amazing. Maw Crusher. Uh, they got Maw Crushed. <laughs> yeah, Jack, when are you going to run your new Iron Jaws, my friend? Um, I still got to pay you, which I will do. Yeah, but well, you can still you can still play them in the game. I don't care. <laughs> I, like I've been, I'm a, a UPS driver, so this is like my super busy time of year. So um, we won't see you again until February. Yeah, as far as casual games, like I would love to play anybody. Yeah, you know, but uh, I haven't just had a lot of time. And the, so most of the time I play is for the channel. You know? That's fair. That's for yeah, I enjoy. You're either on the channel or on tournaments. I know that when I whenever I hear about you having a game, I always like drive by your house real slow. I'm like, <laughs> What's he doing in there? Who's this? Who's this slut in your house? <laughs> <laughs> it's not me. <laughs> like, what do you mean you had a beer with Doug? Where was I? Where was <laughs> I? Yeah, yeah. If you could play Warhammer, I give the I give the other player the stink eye. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. I remember we made the mistake of trying to do two games in one day. We tried that uh, multiple times, haven't we? Like when it was like when AOS first came out. Yeah. Edition, and it was just like I felt so bad for the second players because it's like you guys got to wait upstairs and not do anything. Yeah, that, that was us. Yep. Yeah, this me and Doug had to wait because we watched uh what a Ben Folds concert and then you fell asleep and then yeah. <laughs> I fell asleep on the couch. Doug's just hanging out at my house, sipping iced tea, waiting for the <laughs> game downstairs to end. That was fun. It was I awesome. had a great day. That was a fun day. That was a good day. Uh, we got anything else to talk about? Um, <laughs> Nothing. I'm done with you guys. Yeah. No, I don't know. Like uh, <laughs> we, how does this thing have like a, a time limit? Oh. Nope. No. Oh. How long has it been? Uh, we started at nine, and it's ten thirty-six. Ten thirty-six. Okay. Anyone have any last last questions for us? Because apparently Jack has better places to be. So oh, no, I don't. I don't actually. <laughs> Just he's going to turn into a pumpkin if he stays too long. <laughs> um, I'll give it just a second for the chat to catch up. But um, what do you guys have? Do you have any weird questions from your patrons, like? What kind of uh, robot bear would you be? <laughs> my, <laughs> my patrons ask amazing questions. And I don't know what they get over there at the, in Canada, but uh, <laughs> weird questions. If you were in a realm, how would you survive? If you were given a Bowie knife and three shotgun shells, like I don't care. <laughs> totally, yeah. Um, so if you guys know what we're talking about, like we're making fun of a. Mini wargaming thing where someone like the the sit and talks they do. Sometimes people just ask weird questions, and the hosts are always like trying to answer it. But sometimes they're just weird. <laughs> the questions are just weird. I mean, not the not yeah, the yeah, the hosts are great. The 
yeah. what questions? I'm like, they're so weird. Why would you ask that? <laughs> yeah. Why, why, would you, just... why would you ask Luca if he was a robot bear with a chainsaw arm? What would he do? Like, <laughs> yeah. It's it's just the me- you know the mechanic behind like, uh, look, I made the guy on the TV say something. Look, look, look. Yeah. 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 It's a lot of it is they they ask questions just so they can give their answer. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's it too. Yep, yep. Okay, we got some questions here. Uh, TJ asks, as someone who would like to read up on some AOS lore overall, where would you guys suggest that we start? Core book? Uh, core book's great for world building. Yeah, if you want to get an idea of what the realms are like. Um, as far as narrative stuff, yeah. I'm a huge fan of... Um, Nagash Undying King, Soul Wars. Anything by Josh Reynolds is really well written. I uh, what really got me into it is I'm able to listen to stuff at work. So the mm. Back Library app or even Audible, Audible is a good thing. And the audio dramas. I know Doug's not a big fan because there's a lot of like sound effects, like battle noises mm-hmm. in the background and whatnot. But the uh, the um, was the Hollow Knights audio drama. Mm. Was really cool. It answers some questions. It like, I thought it was really good. And, you know, it, it drops you right in the middle of the world. And I actually prefer the newer books now, because uh, in the you know during the Realm Gate Wars, it was just kind of samey. Yeah, Stormcast okay. guys and Stormcast can be really boring. He's like, because they're it, early on Stormcast, because it was pretty much one dimensional. We pray to Sigmar, we fight chaos. Yep. that's it. And now you have, especially the the Tolis. I forget the other the uh, the books for the the Tolis and the, the Witch Hunters. Mm-hmm. Like, one's a free guild guy, one's a witch hunter. I, I that was my favorite uh, Age of Sigmar book because they're both humans, so you could relate to them. And they were yep. just it was just like a, an adventure, you know. They were chasing after some dark elf chick, and and uh, it was awesome. I think uh, I think their story started in City of Secrets, if I'm not mistaken. If that's the right. Yes, that was the first one, and the yeah. Uh, the, they don't have that on audiobook though, so I don't listen. Yeah, yeah. To them. So I kind of miss them like becoming a team. They're kind of already together. But yeah, it was really good. It, it was my favorite book by far. Hmm. And the uh, the Go Trek audio drama uh, was really good too because it's a very good place to start, especially if you played Warhammer Fantasy Battle. Hmm. Go Trek is like you because he's like with all the name changes. Go Trek is like no, I. Prefer the stuff that I used to, how I saw it. Like he calls dwarves dwarves instead of Duradin, and it actually explains why he like Duradin. I mean, dwarves is the empire way of calling them, and mm-hmm. Duradin is what they call themselves. And he even said, "I probably hung out with humans too much, and that's why I call dwarves dwarves." And you know, he calls dark uh, the daughters of Cain calls them dark elves, even though they're not dark elves in this game. Hello? Yeah, that's hey. a good place. He even start. says, like, you've been hanging around too many humans. Yeah. <laughs> good place to start, especially if you – there are people who are, like, a little salty about AOS. Yeah. Like, Gotrek has a little bit of that salt in his character. So I think people could probably relate to him. I think that's totally fair. Um, yeah. No, I think those are great. City of Secrets, Nagash and King, the Gotrek audiobook. I'm reading the novella one for Go Trek right now. I'm not super into it, but then it kind of seems like it should have been tacked on to another Go Trek book, mm-hmm. like as a as a bonus thing in the back, not necessarily its own thing. So yeah, I'm getting there. But when, uh, when do you read? Do you like read in bed? Yeah. So um, it's like <laughs> like I don't. <laughs> if I go lay in bed, I'm asleep. <laughs> it's kind of yeah. yeah, it's kind of my problem too. Like I, I tend to be I have trouble falling asleep, so I usually I read for like an hour before I actually doze off. Oh, okay. I do the Doctor Strange thing and I astral project from my sleep and I read while I'm sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> no, you astral project from taking care of your ten thousand children and <laughs> are reading at the same time. Ten thousand. <laughs> <laughs> my frog now. What's going on? Really nice. He has eight kids. <laughs> yeah. like, there's no way you're not Mormon, bro. I'm He's the nicest Mormon you'll ever meet. Like when I first met him, he invited me into his house. <laughs> and my brother was like, four of us in there. And he's like, come on in. Yeah, like, right. 17 children. Have fun. Come on in. Yeah. <laughs> Let me um, talk about the, uh, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. 
<laughs> you know, like my bulletproof fundies is gone. <laughs> uh, no, who's who's the other Warhammer guy with a billion kids? Uh, Tom Lyons? Tom Lyons, you watching, buddy? You got five kids? Six kids? Oh, this guy, I have no idea. I know he has children. I have no idea. Yeah, I, th I, I think he also has four. <laughs> okay. Awesome, friends. Well, I will go ahead and wrap us up and let Jack be free to do whatever he wants to do with his night. You didn't have to go. I just and to uh, go. since yeah, he's shutting everything down by being a drama queen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but serious. I'm, I'm going to lose my voice here pretty soon, but I've had a great time chatting. I hope you all enjoy the content about the Battle Forces. They're, I think they're all a solid deal. I mean, if you like the army that they're representing, they're all a good deal. Um, but yeah, we had some thoughts about where to go, and I hope you enjoy that. Uh, if you have a question you want to ask us so we can get to it next time in the comments down below, you can go ahead and uh, leave it there. Kenzie McKeever, I got your message. Yes, I saw your document. I literally just got home before I put this up, so I'll be talking to you about that soon. Um, pretty soon, on that note, I'm going to be hosting a lore, I don't know, not tournament, competition. Send me your lore, and uh, we'll read it on air if it's really awesome. And um Cool. Yeah, I don't know. I figured we could use that as fodder for campaigns and narratives and all kinds of stuff like that. So, because Black Library might not get back to you, but I sure can. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, uh, if you're a fan of uh, like Doug's lore and all this stuff, uh, Warhammer Heroes, Doug Riggs. Go, I, I oh, that nominate out. the guy. I thank you. It was tough. Thank you. Don't feel obligated, but thank you. <laughs> Yeah, that's like saying thank you, thank you, thank you. I was like, you shake hands and take a check from someone's pocket or something like that. <laughs> You're just taking the check. We'll, we'll write it to you. It's fine. It's fine. Cool. Well, friends, until next time, I look forward to seeing you. Um, get prepared for Monday. We're starting Skaven Clan Pestilence, and I will see you then. Thank you all so much, and happy wargaming, guys. Say goodbye. Bye bye, bye guys.